Petra, that was great. Thanks for sharing today. And I've got with me uh, Steeler quarterback Ben Roethlisberger. So but before we get into uh, what uh, uh, Pastor Ed said, how's your elbow and how's your workouts going? Everything's going great. Yeah. Um, it, it feels awesome. Uh, still working into it. Um, yeah. Luckily, I don't have to be ready to go till what, September, hopefully? Yeah, We're yeah. not sure yet, but it feels great uh, ahead of schedule and everything. So I'm, I'm excited and uh, most importantly, throwing without pain. What's it like being in a virtual uh, off-season training? Um, very different. Yeah. Um, just like this, like we're speaking to, you know, a bunch of people watching, but right. no one in here. Um, it's, it's, it's different, but same thing with football. It's, it's unusual after um, – 16 years now, or this would be 17 years, yeah. um, this is the most unusual off-season. One, because of an injury, but two, because all the meetings are done through Zoom or through, you know, uh, computer FaceTime, things like that. So um, I, I've tried to organize some guys for throwing and, yeah. and doing some stuff that we can, but in terms of just having questions for coaches, it, it's, it's very unusual. Well, you look great, Ben. Oh, you, you look like you're in great shape. And I, I've been bragging on you when we're <laughs> talking about you're hungry. Yes. You're hungry to get the, the – To the, sit out for a year. I yeah. mean, that, that, to watch your guys go out there and, and play without you, yeah. that's not easy to do. Yeah. So uh, uh, Pastor Ed talked about dad won. And, you know, uh, years ago uh, when, I, when my kids were little, I heard James Dobson say, the best thing you could do – for your kids is love their mother. So react to that. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's God, yeah. your wife, your kids. Yeah. And I think for, for a long time, I mean, not a long time, my kids are seven, six, and four, so not a long time, but for a while, I think, um, and maybe other men too get caught up in this, when our, when our kids are born, it's like, holy cow like that's amazing like this I created that yeah. right and, and and you see yourself and and all these things and you just want to love on your kid so much which right. which which it, we should do that we should love our children with all our hearts and all stuff but I think what happened for me I can admit this is that I went through a phase of loving my kids more than my wife right and I think a lot of guys do that because I've heard teammates I've heard people say Oh, I love my kids more than anything. Like my kids take priority, and 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 I I get that to an extent, but the more I got in the Word, the more I understood my faith, and the more I understood what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, I realized. Hold on, pump the brakes on that a little bit. Yeah, I can love my kids with all my heart, but right. it still has to come after my wife and after God. Yeah. Um, and so I I had to you know, reevaluate how my love felt. And, 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 and it, it started here. It started yeah. in the word because, um, you know, I, I love my wife. She is my best friend. Right. Um, and maybe that wasn't always so early in our marriage, you know, I, it, priorities aren't always where they probably should be. And so, um, I, I had to, to, to take a good, long, hard look in the mirror and say, hold on, I need to, I need to love my wife. And, and then you start to realize where it falls from there, how much your kids are watching you. You know, I, I want my kids to, to squirm in the kitchen because I'm kissing their mom. Right. You know, like, yeah. oh, dad, stop. You know, you yeah. want that stuff because I remember seeing it. And um, I want my kids to see me and my wife holding hands. I want them to see us laughing and having fun together. And, and that's my challenge to, to, to the men out there is to love your wife so unconditionally yucky yeah. that the kids, you know, the kids are like, oh, yeah. you guys are so in love. Like, and... and it's not easy to do because we love our kids. They're us. Yeah. But, um, you know, it, it's a challenge. But it's, it's when, you, when you realize that, that you can be best friends with your wife and you can have that, that fun love, then it's, it's worth it. You know, I don't want to take a shot, but you definitely outkicked your coverage. I, I totally agree. Uh, I will not disagree with <laughs> you. I'm very sweet, lucky. Ashley's yes. a sweetheart. Your kids are so cute. Uh, Thanks saw to her at, also. Saw them at cap. <laughs> yeah, and a big brain for you guys. Um, so, uh when 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 did you get what what catalyst got you excited about Jesus or who got you excited about Jesus? Well, I grew up in the church, right? Um, you know, we went to church every Sunday with my family. I had I have great parents that were great Christian people, still are to this day. They're awesome. 
Um, and so I, I grew up in that. Middle school, I gave my life to Christ. Um, and so I, I, I think I just, I, I just grew up that way. I don't know right. if there was a specific person other than watching my parents right. um, and learning from them. But um, like so many other people, not everybody, but so many people, um, I think you, when you, especially when you go to college, you kind of walk a line, right? right? You walk a line of either, because now all of a sudden when you go to college, you, you can either find a church and really like, you have to make a commitment, right? Like I need to go find a new, because you're going to a new place. I got to right. find a church. I got to try to try and find a church family. Um, and so you can stay on the path that your parents kind of raised you to do, or you just simply don't go to church because it's not convenient, right? Mm-hmm. You, you know, you're playing on Saturdays, Sundays, you don't want to get up and go. So when I got to church, it's, or excuse me, when I got to college, it wasn't like I, I went, a, like didn't, I stopped believing, but you just don't sharpen your skills. You were not right. reading the Bible. I'm, I'm still praying here and there, but um, I wasn't as strong of a, of a, of a Christian in college as I wish I would have been, uh, yeah. like my wife was. I'm jealous of her that, that she was so devout in, Christ, uh, in college and all that stuff. And then, then when you get to the NFL, all of a sudden the same thing happens. You're going to a new city, um, you know, and, and now there's this new fame and all these things are coming at you. And, and yeah. if, you don't, if you don't stay on that path or get, if I'm off in, in college, I better get back on the, the path or you can just keep going away. And so I kind of I never got back to, that, to the path of where I wanted to be and how I was raised to be. Um, until, um, you know, I found my wife and she really helped me get, get back to it. And then, um, three years ago I got baptized and I was baptized as a kid. Yeah. Uh, you know, my parents took me as a baby, but uh, I didn't make that decision. Right. Right. And so, uh, three, three years ago now I made the decision to be baptized because, um, I just felt that I needed to do that. Like I, I wanted to have a closer walk of a better relationship, um, with Jesus yeah. with my wife, with my kids, with my family, and become a better person. And so um, I think it was just the person that brought me to him was Jesus. Yeah. Jesus is the one that brought me right. back yeah. to him. Um, and, and I'm so thankful for it because I feel I'm a better Christian, a better husband, and a better father today because of his forgiveness of me. Yeah, amen. Uh, his mercy and his grace and his forgiveness. You know, I, I grew up a Muslim. And, uh, you know, I immigrated to the States uh, in 1960. When I came to the Steelers, I met a bunch of guys that loved Jesus, loved each other, and loved me. And I was so attracted uh, to them. John Kolb, Wolf, uh, Donnie Shell, John Stallworth, Mike Webster. And, and uh, they all influenced me, and uh, I wanted to meet Jesus, you know. So I... When, when you gave your life completely to Christ, what happened? Joy, yeah. um, happiness, um, kind of a new, I mean, truly a new life. Yeah. Um, and, and I am so grateful for the guys we have on our team. Right. You know, I, I think it's gotten to the point, and obviously that was a long time ago when you were a long, 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 long 82. time. 82. <laughs> uh, but it, it's, you know, I, I think now more than ever, it's cool to be a Christian. Right. It's okay, like especially professional athletes. And that's what I, one of the things that I want to tell guys and tell people out there is that it's okay. Like I can be a really good athlete and a Christian. It's right. not one or the other. There's, yeah. there's no, you know, you can do both. And, right. and, and I, I want that to be known, especially to all you young men out there. It is, it's cool to be a Christian and be an athlete. Right. Go ahead and be the best athlete that you can possibly be and see if you can be a better Christian. Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to do now. I'm trying to be a better Christian than I am athlete and football player. And um, I push myself every day to, to do that, and it starts here. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's not always easy. I mean, yeah. people forget, too, that – or not forget, but people don't, I think, realize all the time that, that us athletes, we – we're human. Yeah. We sin like everyone else, and right. I am no different. We make mistakes. We get addicted to things. Um, we, we sin. We, there, there's, we're, we're human. Yeah. And I think sometimes we get put on this pedestal where we can't make mistakes. Right. Uh, we do. Um, I, I've, I've fallen as short as anybody. I've been addicted to alcohol. I've, I've been addicted to pornography, which makes me then not the best husband, not the best father, not the best Christian I can be. But you have to dedicate yourself and understand that you can get out of it because of the grace of God and right. him saying, listen, you know, you're good enough for me the way you are. You don't right. have to be perfect. And so that's, that's what I think is important is that 
and, and my message to, to all the, the men out there that are watching this is that we all fall short. I mean, right. that's, that's, that's what happens. Yeah. And, but it's okay. Yeah. You, can, you can get back into the good graces. It, and it, all it takes is an ask. Yeah. And how easy is it for us to use our words? It's not like we have to go do a bunch of things. We don't have to go do a bunch of services and do all the, All we can do is ask. Right. If we ask for forgiveness, he's going to say okay. Yeah. And that's how lucky are we? Yeah. We're just sinners saved by grace. No doubt. Um, uh, and we are broken. Uh, but we're striving to get like Jesus, to, be, to love like Jesus, to be like Jesus. Um, you've got a huge platform. Uh, what is that like for you? Um, it's, it's humbling. Yeah. Um, I don't know that I've always understood or used it the way that I've wanted to. You know, I think it was early in my career especially, which is easy to do when you get success early, you want to use your platform for you to benefit you to how can I be the best and things like that. Now I try and use my platform for him, for yeah. my family to be a, to show people that I can be a good husband, good father, good Christian. Um, and, and so that's like, that's where I'm at now. I want to give all the glory to him because that's where it comes from. Amen. Every single thing that, that I have been blessed with from on the football field, off the football field is because of him. It's nothing to do with me. Right. I put the work in, but he's the one that motivates me in the morning to do the work. He's the one that's given me the ability. Um, it's not like, you know, I was born being able to throw a football, yeah. you know, and obviously I worked at it, but that's because he's given me the ability to do it. And so I, I just, I love giving him the glory now. And, yeah. and so my platform has changed for me personally. It's gone from a selfish platform to a platform of selflessness. And, and I'm not perfect. I mean, I still, you know, I still find ways when I watch other guys where I, I maybe get, I find myself sinning yeah. by being selfish. Like, oh, I wish I, wish I did that. Or I wish, yeah. and, and I'm like, wait a second. That, that's not the way it's supposed to be. For instance, last year, you know, we went through a kind of a crazy off season last year. And all we thought about was getting on the football field. And I was like, God, you're going to give me all this redemption. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to prove everybody wrong. I'm going to go win a Super Bowl. And we're going to give you all the glory. And this is it. This is, our, this is my comeback year. And the second game, I tear my elbow. And you know what it was? That was God being like, hold on. It's not your plan of coming back. It's got to be my plan. So I had to you know, pump the brakes. And that, those are the wake-up calls that he gives us yeah. to say, hold on now. Don't be selfish and do it on your time. Let me do it on my time. And so um, I'm so thankful that this surgery or that this injury happened during my walk that I'm in now. I don't know that I would have been able to handle it you know, a few years ago, you know, five, six, seven, ten years ago, because I don't know that my... I know that my faith wouldn't have been as strong. And now that I know what it's about, it was easy for me to say, hey, God, it's in your hands. I'm going to go train my butt off to get back out there. And whatever you have for me, I'm ready. You know, it, it's when you figure it out, when you figure out it's a gift, mm. that you're, the, you're, your talent is a gift, uh, and you, you're just f- so thankful. So what's your go-to verse? Oh, I mean, there's... I don't know. I'm horrible, horrible, horrible. But I did this morning as I was doing my devotions. I was like, I gotta, I gotta think of you know, because how do you get up and speak and not like quote the Bible somewhere? Right? You just can't not do it. But but yeah. I'm the worst like memorizer and know like if someone starts talking about a verse, I'm like, oh yeah, I can kind of go to it. But right. two that kind of hit me this morning and they're literally on back to back pages. Right. You know, was when I, um, I'm doing a study in, in James. Yeah. And I mean, James is just full. I mean, how can right. you not? Can I just say the book of James? Like, right. that, there's my quote. But, but two that really kind of hit me um, this morning, especially when I was looking at it, was um, James 1, 12. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial, because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Yeah. I mean, how, don't we all go through trials and tribulations? Right. Right. It's how do, we, how do we persevere? How do we come out the backside? And who do we look to? to yeah. during our trials yeah. and and one more just quick one that that i think we all should do listen to is is james uh 119 my dear brothers take note of this everyone should be quick to listen slow okay. to speak and slow, slow to, to anger, to anger. <laughs> yeah that's especially a, that, men right that, that's 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 a great verse my go-to verse is uh psalm 73 uh 23 uh and 24 uh though i'm always with you you hold me by my right hand uh, you guide me with your counsel, and you will take me up to glory uh, when I'm done here. 
And I, I love those four promises. I'm always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You guide me with a counsel, and you're going to take me up to glory. Well, thank you, Ben. It was so uh, outstanding. Thank you so much for uh, being on with us, and thank you for coming to Man Up. Well, thanks for having me. It's, hopefully I can do this again sometime when there's a crowd out here. And, and yeah. uh, I appreciate you and, and everything that you do, both for the team, for us, for the players. And, um, and men out there, I just challenge you. Um, to, to man up. I know it's kind of cliche because this is man up, but man up and be the best husbands and fathers you can be and, and understand that, that we are forgiven. We don't have to be perfect, but be the best that you can be. So we're going to pass it on to Wolf uh, with uh, former Pirate Manager uh, Clint Hurdle, uh, and uh, he's going to be talking about uh, Dad too. Dad <music> too.